So usually when I stream Genshin, a lot of people will tell me to explore because I'm missing out on a lot of primo gems. I mean, just by looking at my exploration progress throughout the VAT, the numbers are pretty sad. So in this video, I'm challenging myself to farm as many primo gems as possible in 24 hours on my pure free to play account, where I save all my primo gems that I obtained with the hopes of one day reaching my final goal of 100,000 free to play primo gems, in order to try and wish for a C6 5 star character without spending any money. In these 24 hours, my main goal is to farm 10,000 primo gems, starting from where we last left off at 56,316. The reason why I'm also starting this challenge is because my time is running out. For all of you that are unaware, initially when I started this account, I also made a goal for myself, saying if I don't reach 100,000 free to play primo gems on this account before I get 150,000 subscribers, I also have to wear 100,000 primo gems on another account. I already lost the bet once back in 3.1, where I was forced to pull for Sino, and I might lose the bet again. But hopefully, in these next 24 hours, we can take my current primo gym count of 56,316 a little bit closer to my final goal of 100,000. So I started off the first few hours farming for primo gyms by doing something that everyone should be doing, which is to look for the Shrine of Depths chests throughout Monster and Liyue. I know you might be asking now, so Voti, you're AR56 on this account and you haven't even finished opening up the chests? Well, yes. I'm lazy, okay? And I have 4 accounts that I play on, so I didn't really get a chance to do them. Anyways, each Shrine of Depths rewarded us with 40 Primo Gems each. I even scavenged around Mountstadt and found some precious chests as well. So after running around Mountstadt and collecting the chests from unlocking the Shrine of Depths, I realized that I also had to complete the Mountstadt one time Trounce domains, which also rewarded the keys used to open the Shrine of Depths. And more importantly, we could get 40 Primo Gems there as well. The domain was pretty easy, and I realized that the enemies here were pretty low level. This seemed pretty easy though. It's like I'm popping balloons. Oh, there it is, okay. After that, I went through a few more domains to get the rest of the Shrine of Depths keys and Primo gems. The domains were all very easy for me, since my characters are all level 80 to 90, while the enemies are only level 20. So going through all of them was a breeze. Each domain also has a chest upon completion, giving me even more primo gems as well. I don't know if it was because we're in Mondstadt or not, but the domains were all literally over in 10 seconds. Wow, that's really fast. And there weren't any puzzles that we had to solve, so it was easy primos. After that, I collected all Mondstadt's shrine chests, and I just realized that I could also complete my adventure handbook chapters to get more primo gems as well. Alright, let's check out the books. Inst investigation progress? Oh, I have so many exclamation marks. Why? Oh well. Anyways, we got our chapter 6 done. Maybe we can automatically complete chapter 7 as well. Okay, let's see. 150 primos for completing all of them. I've just been slacking, I guess. Wait, it's chapter 8 as well? Okay. I automatically completed the next chapter before I was gated by the Li Yue Shrine of Depths. Spend 300 animal sigils and 15 Shrine of Depths. So I believe this is probably like Li Yue ones as well I need to do. So I went into all of Liyue's domains and completed them one by one. Okay. I don't know if you guys noticed, but this domain used to haunt my dreams. But hopefully I'm able to just overcome this. Oh, never mind. It's easy. Okay. There was also a domain with some geo puzzles, but they were all pretty easy. After collecting 9 keys, I went to open each of them, and also killed a few enemies for some chests. I noticed that I was actually missing one key, and realized I haven't completed one of the world quests, so I quickly went to start it. We basically had to find a few notes scattered across the abandoned mine in Liyue, and at the end of a quest, we actually got a precious chest, as well as our last Shrine of Depths key. So I did some more exploration in Liyue, before finally opening the last Shrine of Depths chest in Liyue. After that, I spent my animal sigils and was able to complete my adventurer's handbook. Some of you guys suggested I craft the treasure compass. So I went around in Azuma to collect some Oni Kabudos and some Electro Oculi before finally being able to craft my first Inazuma treasure compass. I was able to start using it to track down some chests that were hidden in Inazuma city. So it was a pretty good investment overall. Next, I went to collect some more Electro Oculi, just so I can level up my Inazuma statue. I completed some time trials along the way to find some chests in order to obtain the Primos, and there's a much needed exploration. I've been slacking a lot, so there were a bunch of enemy camps I just never got to clear out. So my world was filled with these chests. 
While exploring Inazuma to find chests, I was able to collect enough Electro Oculi to finally level up my statue, and we got some nice Primo gems out of it. At the 5 hour mark, I started to do some story quests, starting with Yaimikos. While running around Inazuma, we scavenged for a few chests while getting through the story. Inside the story quest domain, there were also some hidden chests that we managed to collect, and eventually we completed a story quest to obtain 60 Primo gems. Around 8 hours in, daily reset happened, so we got to complete the daily commissions for some easy primo gems. Dailies are a reliable and quick way to obtain some primo gems. But since this is a 24 hour challenge, we could only take advantage of it once. After completing everything and defeating all the enemies, we returned to Catherine to get all of our daily resources of primo gems for the day. I know the Valen doesn't give us any primo gems, but I also went to fight a boss since it was pretty fast and my resins were almost capped. For the next hour, I managed to complete both Venti's story quests as well as Mona's. I didn't really find that many primo gems while doing both quests, but we did get a primo gem rewards for completing both story quests. Next, I started a brewing developments event to get some easy primo gems. It's a combat focused event with 12 characters we could bring. So we just had to complete each of the stages to get the primo gems. The combat was pretty fun, and we could get some buffs depending on what element the characters we had. Since we had trial characters, they helped me through this event, and we got to trial some team comps that we normally wouldn't be able to on this account. After the event, I also completed the character trials for both Nilo and Nahida, which got me an additional 40 primo gems. The next hour, I followed some of you guys' recommendations and found Dandy the Adventurer in Niue to complete some time trials. We could get up to 3 chests each time we complete a trial. There were a few that we could do in different locations, making this a pretty fast and easy way to get primo gems as well. So thanks for the recommendation, Gollum. After that, I decided to finish up the Fortune Slip World quest back in Inazuma. We had to find a few spies in Inazuma and confront them, before beating them up. After that, we talked to some more Sensdaya spies and had to fight a few for 3 enemies as well. We headed into a domain and rescued Momoyo before completing the quest. Later on, I also went to the Dragon Spine to collect some ore. I also found a few chests along the way before fighting an intense battle against the Fatuis. Afterwards, we crafted a Dragon Spine Spear with Orban and got some Primo Gems for the trouble. Halfway through our run, I headed to the Spiral Abyss to complete floors 9 to 10. I would say my characters are pretty well built, but splitting into two teams for the first and second half definitely makes the runs more challenging. In the first chamber, we just slowly picked apart each of the enemies with mostly Kaya and got through the first half pretty easily. In the second half, I had an Overload and Hyper Bloom comp, and since our Lisa's elemental mastery was pretty high, we did a good amount of damage against the enemies. In Chamber 2, it was a breeze. Our Kaya did most of the heavy lifting once again, and with some Hyper Bloom reaction trickling in, we were able to get through the first half. On the other side, I basically just unleashed all my character's bursts to get rid of the first wave of enemies. The Hydro Abyss mages at the end weren't that bad since we had Dendro with us, so we were able to destroy the shields rather easily. The third chamber consists of mainly fungi enemies, and like the previous floors, we just used Kaya to carry and pick the enemies off one by one. The final chamber was really quick, and we just used all of our bursts to defeat three enemies here. In floor 10, I used the same exact team comp that I did in floor 9, with Kaya starting out and defeating all the enemies. I was doing around 3k normal attacks when I crit, so the enemies were taken care of pretty fast as well. On the other side, there were two lizards, and they were pretty tanky. I had to watch out for their attacks, since we could also get our elemental burst energy drained by their attacks. But after taking our time, we were able to defeat them. The second chamber had dual samurai enemies, and as always, we had to defeat both of them together so we could prevent them from healing up. I unga boonga and threw out every burst that I had, and surprisingly, it actually worked. After that, we just cleaned up the rest of the Aramai enemies. The second half had a giant Lava Troll Sparky and an Abyss Mage. Luckily, we had our trusty Hyper Bloom team, and we easily disposed of the enemies. Finally, we reached the third chamber, but this time, we were well prepared. I started off by unleashing all my bursts on a Hydro Fatui Gunner, and took him out afterwards. After that, I swapped my next target to the Pyro Fatui Gunner, and did the exact same thing. The Aramites will follow me as well, so we just defeated the rest of our enemies together. The second half had a 3 for 3 mages, and they were pretty hard. I focused on the 2 electro system mages first, and just used Xiangling's burst to overload and do a little bit of hyper bloom reactions with Barbara. After that, I used all my bursts on the Mirror Maiden, and we were able to get through this final chamber. So I was feeling pretty confident in myself, and decided to also try floor 11. The first chamber was surprisingly not that bad, and we were able to freeze the enemies here. The two sparkies from the next half were pretty thick, but we got through them with Hyper Bloom and Freeze. However, in the second chamber, things got a bit harder. 
I had to run away constantly because the oceanate mimics were pretty scary and hit very hard. But eventually, we were able to slowly heal back up and clear the first chamber with three stars. The second chamber was too hard for us, and we struggled against the tanky ruined drakes. But the second half made the tanky ruined drakes seem very easy. In the second half, the Halucha enemies were a nightmare to deal with with our team. So I struggled against them for quite a bit before finally giving up and just taking the rewards. Next, I started to explore the new desert region in Sumeru. There was also a pool that we could upgrade for even more primo gems. But since it was locked through the newest world quest, we had to start it first before we eventually gained access to it. So now we're basically farming for three things at once. There were a bunch of chests that we could collect while doing a quest, and also the oculi that were scattered across the deserts. And while exploring, we were also completing the world quest all together. I actually enjoyed flying around as Sorish and solving the puzzles in the desert. The Sumeru puzzles did take me a bit before finally figuring out how to do them. But being able to explore a new region was really fun, and I was so engraved that I lost track of time. But yeah, using Sorosh to solve the puzzles was honestly a pretty fun and unique mechanic. And on top of all the primo gems that we got, it was definitely rewarding as well. We made some offerings to the pool, and were able to get some nice primo gems because of it. But yeah, special shoutouts to Aditi for the recommendations. I know you guys also recommended that I go do the Aranara quest, but at this point, I was pretty drained already. So I decided to just continue my desert exploration, and also return to Inazuma to collect some more Oculi. I also opened up a few Inazuma Shine Up Depths chests, since I had a few keys. Later on, I found out how to unlock a domain by first using a cannon to blow up an opening. This domain had 40 primo gems as a reward, and also some hidden chests scattered throughout as well. It was pretty straightforward, and we cleared it after defeating the two Fatuis at the end. I solved another puzzle and unlocked another domain. With our effort, we got another 50 primo gems from competing it. There was the final domain in Inazuma that I also had to solve a puzzle first before we could access it, but it rewards 40 primo gems as well, so it was worth completing. The puzzle was pretty easy. We just had to infuse ourselves with Electro and make the arrow thing point at the right direction. After unlocking the domain, we collected a chest inside and struggled a bit before finally completing it. So in the final hour of this challenge, I decided to just take things slow and did this time trial quest with Kid Kujirai. We had to find the Temari in a certain amount of time, and we got a precious chest for completing it. It was pretty easy, so thank you Liv for this suggestion. Alright, so with our 24 hour challenge completed, let's finally check up on our primo gem count. 63,654. So we didn't get 10,000 primo gems, but we came pretty close. This was pretty exhausting to do, but we are now officially 63% of the way to our final goal of 100,000. Although we're still pretty far away, we did make some nice progress. So special shoutouts to all of you that commented tips and suggestions that I used throughout this video. And hopefully the rest of you guys learned some primo gym tips as well. When I first started this account, I didn't really know if I could reach a goal. But now with all your help, I think I'll be able to reach 100,000 primo gyms by the end of the year. Speaking of which, I'm also almost at 150,000 subscribers. So if you want to support the channel or make me well, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.